Well, we would like to welcome in Kyle Weatherman. He runs the Xfinity number 47 for Mike Harmon Racing. Thanks for joining us, Kyle. How are you doing? Doing good. Yeah, I had, uh, actually just got back from work, kind of uh, ready to eat some dinner here in a minute, kind of relax and uh, kind of just hang out a little bit. What about you guys? Doing great, man. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. And uh, Bart, I'll kick things off to you, man. Yeah, so just curious to start from the beginning to, to get to know your career a bit. Um, you got your start super young, eight years old, running go-karts. And we always ask, this is always the first question. And like, it definitely turned from a hobby to a career. Was that always a dream? Like, was it once you started running carts, you're like, yep, I'm, I'm going all the way with this. Uh, so my dad used to race a little bit. Um, but no, actually, it started off my dad, my brother and I. Um, and, and a couple more friends to start just to kind of do it on the weekend, enjoy time with my dad, brother, uh, friends, family, stuff like that, just to kind of, uh, you know, just do, um, you know, something a little bit different. First of all, I've always wanted to be a little bit different, right? But, uh, and then secondly, just spend time with the family, um, sure. you know, and I'd say, obviously, at eight, I really realistically didn't know a whole lot of what was going on. <laughs> but, you know, soon, you know, nine, 10, 11 years old, I soon realized that, you know, this is something that I really want to turn um, you know, to, to a dream and, and live out a dream instead of, you know, a hobby, you know, and, and, uh, have it as a career, you know, so, uh, it, it, it turned, it changed really quick to, to a hobby, to, to a career really fast. Yeah. And it seems like racing is a big family centered sport, uh, no matter what series you're racing in. Uh, we did see somewhere and tell us if this is right or wrong, that a family friend was actually reaching out, trying to pull you in. Um, was your family always fans of racing or was that family friend just really persuasive in, in getting you in the car? Yeah. So like I said, my dad raced go-karts a little bit, nothing yeah. at the professional level or anything like that. Uh, but my dad's best friend, Brian Maine is related to David Reagan. Okay. Uh, so Br Brian Maine, which is my dad's best friend has been involved in racing and my dad's always liked racing. Right. Um, but uh, that's really realistically how it got started uh, further down the road. Uh, to a professional level is going through Brian Maine uh, and obviously getting linked up with David Ray in and then uh, David knew Chris Busher and that's really realistically kind of how I got tied into both of those and, and both those drivers have been a huge help in my career um, from from the start you know awesome. so it's been really from really cool to to know both those and they've obviously both been very successful and um, you know it, it's really cool to have both those guys on my side for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. And so you made your ARCA debut in 2013 at 16. Uh, and that was a family funded team. And we see other guys run in these family funded teams. What how does that pan out? And does it change the racing style knowing that if you put damage on a car that it's coming out of the family's pocket? What is that like when you're running a, a family funded team like that? Oh, it definitely changed that perspective a little mm -hmm. bit. But on the other hand, I've always um, you know, you know, not had, and the amount of funding that I need to, to kind of just show up and drive kind of thing, mm -hmm. uh, nor would I really want that, you know, I mean, honestly, I, I obviously, yes, more funding would be nice, first of all. Uh, but secondly, I'm, I'm very hands-on, you know, I really enjoy working on the cars. I work at Rick Ware's, uh, right now, actually working on their cup cars and then driving Mike Harmon's car on the weekend. Uh, you know, so I, I just really enjoy being hands-on and, uh, you know, kind of helping out. Uh, getting to know the team better, first of all, I know that's really important. And secondly, right. I just, I enjoy being a mechanic. Obviously, it's definitely not top of the list. Uh, <laughs> driver driver is definitely there. But, uh, you know, secondly, I just, I just enjoy doing it as well. So uh, to answer your question, you know, I've always um, respected the equipment like it's my own, you know, so right. definitely when it was my own, for sure, definitely <laughs> uh, was was a little bit uh, on that side, but still, sec uh, you know, um, always respected the equipment no matter really whose it is you know just uh kind of treated it like it might like it was uh you know a family team all, all the time you know you and realistically yep so you've got you've got a fun fact that most people can't say you lived in carl edwards house in charlotte with chris busher of all people we so did. like how on earth did this happen is there like a nascar airbnb out there that we don't know about is, like, <laughs> how did how did you get that hookup I actually don't, so I don't know if uh, Carl still owns the house or not, but it's actually a house that Carl lived in when he was in North Carolina. Um, and and uh, Carl, I'm not as close to Carl as, as I am with David or Chris, uh, but Carl's from Missouri as well. So, um, you know, I actually have spoke with Carl a few times. And like I said, I, I'm not, you know, best friends like I am with the other two or anything like that, but uh, still to have Carl, um, you know, still um, help out in, in a few ways that he has before. And to obviously, uh, you know, live in his house was, was really cool, you know, so 
Um, and, you know, so yeah, Carl didn't live there anymore. Uh, and actually, you know, what, what he, obviously we still paid a little bit of rent, but the biggest mm-hmm. thing he wanted to do was, was to have us just kind of clean up a little bit. It was, uh, you know, he hadn't had anyone living there in a couple of years. And, and, uh, you know, so Chris and I, and, and Emma, his girlfriend at the time, uh, he's married now, but, um, you know, we just, uh, cleaned it up and it was, a, it was a nice home that we, uh, kind of cleaned up for him until, uh, until Chris got his first home. So, uh, <laughs> awesome. and actually lived with Chris for a while. And then, uh, my mom and my mom and sister actually moved out to North Carolina, uh, from Missouri. So, uh, actually ended up moving in with them and, um, and, you know, that's been pretty good so far. That's awesome, man. That's a cool story. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you went from go-karts, Bandolera, Legends, Arca, but then you just like went, um, w- like straight to cup with one, you had one truck start and yeah. 50 Arca starts, and then you went straight to cup, like, and Martinsville of all places, like no room for mistake. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, how, yeah. how freaking nervous were you on that first I, race? I, I'm not going to lie. I, I was really nervous. Right. <laughs> and, and I was doing everything I could to, to reach out to drivers, you know, first of all, uh, actually never been there. I've never been there either. Uh, you know, so that, and, you know, I was on iRacing as much as I could, uh, watching video film, uh, doing everything I could to study. Um, and then, you know, obviously going to the shop and working on the equipment, you know, knowing what I'm driving and stuff like that's important, you know, knowing my safety inside the car, uh, you know, so I just did everything I possibly could, uh, to be prepared for that race. And, you know, it was, it was a really good race, you know, obviously we definitely wish we could have finished better, but secondly, you know, we kept it clean. Uh, I actually don't even think there was a scratch on it. So, you know, that's, that's really important, uh, to myself and, and team owners, you know, obviously they definitely look for drivers that can take care of the equipment. So, um, you know, it was, it was a really cool race. Uh, I'm really cool to, uh, and it was a, it was a playoff race as well. So just to kind of be, yeah. um, involved in that environment and to, uh, uh, you know, just, just be racing with the best of the best. Uh, and actually that was actually what I did in, in the legend car days is, um, you know, obviously they've got different levels of, of, you know, it starts at like, um, I don't even know what it starts at. I guess it starts at like semi-pro, uh, pro. And I think there's actually one uh, below it. I don't know the exact, uh, I forget the name of it, but, um, actually right when I was 12 years old, I went to the pro pro class and, and I always think that, and obviously racing at the cup level is a little bit different. Um, but being thrown into, um, the pit, I guess you could say with, yeah. with the best, of the best, um, it helps you out in a way. And obviously, Cup level is a little bit different. I, I guess I'm not a best um, reference there, but, you know, just uh, to be at that level and to be with the best of the best um, and, and just pay attention to how they handle themselves throughout the race and stuff of like that, uh, well, it was really cool. You know, just a, a really, really cool learning experience. That's for, that's for sure. That's awesome. So, and you're from St. Louis originally, and I know Kenny Wallace runs dirt up there in that area. And um, I follow some friends from college who racing just seems to be really big in that area. Was there any other uh, peers that uh, came along with you uh, on your, um, as you rose up in that area? Not really that area besides Carl and then um, Mike Mittler, which unfortunately he's not with us now, but he was a really, really cool guy. And, and I actually worked when I, when I lived there uh, in Missouri, uh, his shop was actually really close to, to where I live. So I actually would go in there and help on the truck and stuff like that. Uh, so between those, uh, you know, two, um, I don't know Kenny as much. Definitely would like to know Kenny because he's got some really cool dirt cars that I definitely yeah. would like to drive. But um, Ken Schrader as well, you know, so Ken, mm, Ken's yeah. from that, up in that area as well. And I actually raced ARCA with him. Uh, you know, so Kenny Schrader is another one that's, uh, that's been really helpful as well. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So we, we've got a lot of these times back in the day, a lot of drivers made that big jump like you did. And we see a lot uh, these days of the cup drivers saying we want people to cut their teeth until they get up there. So what is it like and what was it like to skip to cup? And was that a a choice that you made or was it just an opportunity became available and you got to, you know, pilot a cup car? Yeah. Yeah. It was just an opportunity that arose. Right. And obviously definitely as a driver, you're going to take any opportunity you can get. Um, definitely, you know, realistically would have maybe liked to have had a couple of stars, maybe even truck or, uh, Xfinity doesn't go there. They are this year, but go, you know, have a, you know, a start below at that track and have a little bit of experience. But, um, you know, I, like I said, I just, I respected everybody on the track. Right. I mean, I definitely was there to learn, uh, but there to also gain respect from everybody else, you know? So, um, you know, it, it was, it was definitely, I think I prepared myself very well. And, um, you know, obviously realistically, yeah, it would have been nice to probably have a couple of starts, you know, on the lower series, but, 
um, you know, like I said, I was, I was definitely there just to learn, keep the car clean and gain respect from other drivers. And, and I think I did that that day. So that was, uh, that was good. But um, no, I, I think it was, uh, was a really, really cool experience and, and I'm really definitely, uh, definitely a fun one. That's for sure. Yeah. That, and, and so what did you take away? I mean, we always, there's obviously you've been looking up to these guys and what do you take away when you've been driving around these guys? What were some of those big takeaways or what did you learn most from stepping up to that level and getting to be around some of your childhood heroes and guys that you're like, Oh, I'd like to take their seat one day. Yeah, no, it, it was just, like I said, a, all the way around, just a really, really cool experience. Um, and ever since, you know, um, obviously I started when I was eight, but nine, 10, you know, 11 years old, I dreamed about doing that, you know, right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, to get that opportunity with, with Rick, uh, gosh, I even forget the year. That's terrible. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, don't forget their memories, but I definitely, I forget, I guess forgot the year, but, um, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it just was amazing. Right. And, and just to, to be at that level and to race against, uh, you know, David Reagan, Carl Edwards, Chris Buescher, all these, all these drivers that I've looked up to um you know kyle bush you know all these drivers that are just absolutely amazing right to uh, to be at that level uh was just an incredible weekend awesome i'm also interested to get your perspective on this because you know we're fans of the sport and we our perspective is what we see on tv or what we see on social media and a lot of times um lower funded teens they don't have so, uh, so much of a voice when it comes to those those outlets and it seems like more so this year than i can remember than in past years, the lower funded teams are getting a, a lot of criticism and especially the higher series. Um, and, and people say they shouldn't be there if they can't contend or make speed. Um, so as a driver for one of those teams um, who necessarily isn't able to, to have one of those post-race interviews, a lot of times it's Kyle Busch saying, saying stuff right out of the car and that's what people hear and that's kind of the opinion that they have. What is the perspective of a driver in that position what's the perspective and what does success really look like yeah i mean obviously uh kyle has never really had to drive something like that but you, know, you look at alex bowman um you know chris busher there's been a handful of drivers that have had to drive uh you know equipment that uh isn't funded like the cars that are, are winning races um you know but on the other hand you've definitely got to respect um, you know, the drivers that have, you know, a little bit more speed, right? So mm -hmm. that's really important. And that's definitely big at, at that level is to respect those guys. Um, and I guess, um, you know, you just hold your line and, and stay that pretty consistent with where you're at uh, and they'll get around you kind of thing, you know? So that's the biggest thing. And, and you know, obviously, um, you know, Kyle always can get uh, a little heated sometimes and, and uh, voice his opinion pretty, pretty clearly, but um <laughs> you know, just the biggest thing, in my opinion, is you've got to have, you know, teams like that to, to bring drivers like myself up to be ready for um, that level, you know, and uh, if you just get rid of, uh, you know, all those teams and it's, you know, just kind of, uh, you're only left with, four, you know, 10 cars or something like that, 15 cars, right. you know, so, uh, you know, it, it's, it's important to have these guys and obviously, you know, me looking at it, it gives me opportunity, you know, so it's got, they've got to be there, but um you know, it's, um, on the other hand, like you said, you've got to respect the, the drivers that are, you know, have got more speed for sure. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and talking about guys who have been a part of this sport for a long time, Mike Harmon has been in the sport, it seems like forever. And so how has it been driving for somebody that obviously has such a passion and a dedication? And what does that do for you as a driver? Is he there, um, uh, as an owner urging you along, does he have more of a hand in the process with a team like this? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he's hands on with everything. So, awesome. uh, the cool part about that is he has been a driver and still is, uh, you know, so you get that aspect as well. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so just kind of, you get help all the way around and it's, it's a great mentor to have. Um, I try to surround myself and I find it's very important to surround yourself with people like that, uh, to get, um, you know, experience from, you know, every, every aspect. Uh, whether it's it is business side on on how to you know manage a company first of all or or you know behind the wheel or behind the seat you know so uh, to get both sides and, and have um, you know both mics uh, kind of thing it is really important just uh, all the way around a really good mentor and uh, you know someone really good to learn from. Yeah, and you you also mentioned your mechanics, so you're like super hands on in the car. You like build the cars, you race the cars. Um, where, where did you pick that up along the way, uh, learning how to work on the cars? Uh, eight years old, my dad was having me change has had change uh, the the, spot, the sprockets, the gears, uh, change the tires on my go kart, clean them, 
you know, so dad, uh, dad definitely had me hands on dirty, uh, you know, ever since I was eight years old. So, uh, and I, I wouldn't trade it for a thing. I mean, I, I'm very thankful that he did that, uh, you know, cause it's another passion of mine that I really enjoy doing. Uh, it's just, it's just second in line. Definitely not, uh, not top of the list. Yeah. Well, it definitely makes you so much more well-rounded a lot of times these days, like we'll say William Byron, he doesn't know anything about a car. Cause he, <laughs> it, it was more so, uh, I racing that brought him in and that's not, not like to knock William Byron, oh, but yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so I, that's just really cool. Uh, in my opinion. Um, so earlier this year, interesting story, you d- this made national news <laughs> and like, so freaking crazy. The truck and the trailer, uh, Mike Carmen's truck and trailer that was carrying your car, um, from Daytona. I'm not sure if it was to or from, um, yeah, from, from, yep. from you guys. So you guys are already, already raced. Yep. Yeah. We raced in Daytona and they were on their way back um the truck stopped don't know the time i can't remember the time it, w- it was pretty early in the morning they stopped to get a hotel uh they actually parked it in the cracker barrel parking lot and uh, they they got up uh the morning after uh seven or eight o'clock whatever time they were leaving and it, it was gone you know and, and still unfortunately still haven't uh got any sight or or any other type of information from that uh, from, uh, anything, honestly, besides that one video surveillance camera that we had of it heading back towards, actually back towards Daytona. Um, that, that's all we have, you know, and that's, uh, it, it stinks, especially for a smaller team like Mike's, you know? Yeah. So what kind of position did that put you guys? And I'm sure a lot of the equipment that you use on a weekly basis was in there. So like, what did you guys have to do to rally to get going? The next week yeah so yeah so a lot of teams definitely pitched in and, and helped uh but okay. actually we're just and not just now seeing it but uh this weekend uh, we have daytona or talladega next weekend we have the charlotte roll uh that was our road course car right so now next week is, is going to be a, a pretty hard week for us just because we don't have a road course car so now we have to uh you know find parts and, and get parts and pieces to build a road course car uh, and there's tons of parts and pieces that go into um, a road course car than it does than you know a short track or even a mile and a half or or a short track car from uh, you know that that standard. So whether it's the um, you know windshield wiper and in, in, uh, in the uh, um, you know front glass or you know the back the, the camera or the uh, light in the back uh, you know just the rear end housing is different you know the front suspension is different. Uh, there's just there's just a ton of things that are different from even our short track cars that we have uh, for our oval stuff. You know so. Um, pretty hard situation actually coming up here for uh, getting ready for the Charlotte Roble. Yeah, well, uh, speaking of, you know, the future here and the races coming up, what is your plan? What's the end of the year look like? What's 2021 looking like for you? What, what do you have coming up for everybody here? Yeah, yeah. So definitely trying to find funding for, uh, you know, my goal next year is to be full time. Uh, you know, so that's, that's really what I'm shooting for, uh, trying to find some sponsorship money to do, to do that. Uh, I think at the end of the year, we're going to have 15 starts uh, and there's 32, uh, I think 32 in Xfinity cars. So, uh, you know, definitely going to try to find funding to, to do that and, and uh, compete at full time and see what we can do for the point standings. Yeah. And, and we had talked to Kaz Grala uh, about a month ago and he said one of the things that like, and, and you mentioned you're splitting your time working on cars. So what's it like when it comes to sponsorship? Are you heavily involved in that process? Are you reaching out to sponsors, trying to build that relationships just as much as Mike is? Yeah, yeah. And, and I have a really good, I have, I have a couple of people that are really helping out and I've got a really good team behind me. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so I, that's, that's really cool that I've got help on it as well. Um, but yeah, whenever, our, obviously it is very, it is really hard to balance, you know, having a job at Rick's, uh, balancing that with, you know, spending enough time on, on my end and then also racing on the weekends, you know, and I, I do try to fit in that schedule, uh, going over to Mike's shop actually and, and helping on the Xfinity car as well. So, um, yeah, there, there is a, a really hard balance there of trying to have the correct amount of, of time on each end and, and still have enough time to, you know, balance on my end for myself on, on you know, trying to round out sponsorship money as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, you know, we appreciate you taking some of that time to be with us. Uh, we, we definitely want to thank you so much for being a part of this with us. And, um, you know, we're talking to fans so that we love to hear from the guys that we don't get to hear from every single day or every Sunday when we have a cup race. So uh, we appreciate you being on with us. No, appreciate you having me on and definitely stuff like this matters too, you know, so mm-hmm. making time for this stuff. And like I said, I really appreciate you guys having me on here. And, uh, and just make sure that everyone's reaching out and, and, and follow me on all my social media handles at Kyle Weatherman and, 
and uh, and stay tuned to what's coming. For sure.